All right. All right, so I've heard some discussions about what some of the, uh, you know, what should the president do if these four situations came up. Um, you know, the blockade is the tough one because then the Soviets are really going to force us to engage if they break the blockade. That's going to be a problem. And the other thing that came, I think you guys came up with, is if you wait it out for weeks, it's, it's kind of like there's a problem, you're just going to let it go away. That never, it's always going to fester. It's never going to go away. So that one, I think, was the, those were the two that were the toughest to deal with. All right, so now let's look at what actually did happen here, okay? So, um, the U.S. policymakers had a lot of pressure on them as the blockade was being uh, enforced. People started leaving the, uh, leaving the cities because they thought there's going to be an atomic attack. And they wanted to, to hopefully survive it, so that's why they were getting out of these large areas. And if you go back... We go back a couple of slides. You can see how far the, the, these missiles that are medium range ballistic missiles, they can reach all the way to San Francisco. You'd have to go to Seattle to be out of range. And so that's where the real problem was with having those missiles that were lined up in Cuba. That was the real concern. There was just no place that was out of range within the United States. Now, at that time, the U.S. military was on full alert. They had fully loaded B-52 bombers, and they had nuclear weapons that they were ready to use at all times. And so they would have one takeoff, and then when it came back, we'd have another takeoff. So we were constantly on alert. Now, in the end, the Soviets honored the blockade. So on Wednesday, October 24th at 10.32, there were 20 Soviet, tr uh, Soviet ships that were stopped dead in the water. All right, just outside of an American blockade, so out in here. Now, at that point, you've got Soviet ships and American ships that are facing each other. And one of Kennedy's, Kennedy's advisors, his name was Dean Russ, this was his quote, we're eyeball to eyeball and I think the other fellow just blinks. But here's the problem. At this time, 12 ships that were Soviets turned around and went the other way. But we have one, one issue, and in in that is the missiles are still in Cuba. So what do we do? So the blockade has worked. The Soviets didn't engage. They went away. Now we've still got the Cubas, or the missiles in Cuba. So finally, on Friday night, October 26, Khrushchev sent a letter um, with an emissary <laughs> that uh, to inform President Kennedy of the Soviet Union's willingness to withdraw the missiles from Cuba if... The United States entered the blockade, they promised never to invade Cuba, and then they withdrew its missiles from Turkey. Now, President Kennedy was willing to agree to the first two demands. Publicly, the president refused to back down from the missiles in Turkey. The reason why is because he had a lot of allies that were in Western Europe, and, and domestically, he didn't want to look weak towards communism. But secretly, Kennedy told the Soviets that the U.S. would agree to the demands in Khrushchev's lever, but here's the deal. They will withdraw the, Tur uh, the missiles from Turkey, but the Soviets cannot talk about it. It can't be brought up publicly because there would be negative reactions within the U.S. and its allies. So Kr Khrushchev then agreed to Kennedy's terms. They didn't want to start a World War III. So at the risk of... of um, I'm sorry. So on so on that Saturday, uh, the Attorney General, which was Bobby Kennedy, he was the President's brother. He met with a Soviet ambassador and told him that the missiles in Turkey were not a part of the deal, but they would be removed. The crisis so finally ended Attention, on October 28th. Scheduled to this afternoon. Please report to 1B209 at this time. Oh, I can't wait. All students scheduled All right. to test this Did afternoon. Did I say that out loud? Please report okay. to 1B209 at this time. Thank so you. the Soviet Union agreed to remove the, the missiles and exchange uh, to end the blockade and the American assurance, uh, assurances that they pulled it out of, uh, the missiles out of Turkey and nothing be said. And then at that point, the Cuban Missile Crisis is over. Now, Ed, Cuban Missile Crisis. Ed. Ed. Sorry. <laughs> so, during that, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh -huh. all right, just real quick, if you, how, 
how did you, you know, when we did all that, how did you feel about the Cuban Missile Crisis, or how did you feel about, what's the question? Um, coming so close to nuclear war. It's never come any closer. Uh, pretty petrified. Right? I mean, yeah, it's pretty scary that, you know, because it's, it's just going to be a domino effect. They nuke us, we're going to nuke them, then it's just going to go back. And then it's back and forth, right? I think that's where the, the, the most pressure was. If one starts, then the other's going to respond, and then it's a never ending thing. I'm so. just happy that we were both smart as a country not to press the button. Based on what we learned about Hiroshima and Nagasaki, yes. what type of destruction do you think might have happened had an interaction take place? Oh, I think it would be, I think it would be so much more worse okay. than anything like that. Okay. Because, I mean, those are, those are atomic bombs. Attention, Daniel Cohen, please report to the front office. Daniel Cohen, please report to the front office. Yep. And us getting more smarter and better with building things, especially Russia, and just absolutely pouring everything into military. I think it would just be horrible. It would be absolutely just mass destruction. Mass destruction. No doubt. There's no doubt. All right. So you've got your critical thinking questions on these sheet. Make sure you've got your responses that you wrote down and then make sure to hand those in. And uh, any other questions? You in the back? Got any questions back there? None? Okay. All right. Thanks, guys.